Hey everyone, welcome back to the South Metro Fire Rescue YouTube channel. I know it's been a while since we've had a vlog and there's been a bunch of questions about two different second alarm fires that South Metro responded to in November and I'm here to get you updated on what happened at both of those incidents. Before we jump into the on-scene video, there are a couple important things about this building that I want you to know. In 2018, right after the Cunningham and South Metro Fire Rescue unification, we featured an unscripted episode with then Fire Station 61, which is now known as Fire Station 21. We actually went to a couple of different target hazard apartment buildings in what was the Cunningham Fire Protection District to do pre-planning, and it included this very building that burned. Here's a flashback to 2018. Now you want to get out and, and learn these buildings as the best as you can uh, before there's a fire. When the fire is occurring in the building, is not the time to, to know where the fire alarm panel is, where the FDC is, where the stairwells are, how, the, how these buildings are constructed. The more knowledge you have of the building prior to the event, the more successful you'll be both as a firefighter on the hose line and as a battalion chief in, in charge of the fire. So we try to make an effort to get out and learn these buildings as well as we can, um, as often as we can, talk about firefighting, discuss strategy and tactics, and that way we become, we are more prepared when the fire event occurs. Sometimes the scenes can be chaotic depending on the time of day. When you first arrive on scene at nighttime, a lot of times you have people that are hanging out of windows or on balconies that are wanting to be rescued. The biggest challenges of this battalion in the realm of firefighting would be the large majority of unsprinklered multiple dwellings that exist down here. 1960s, 1970s, Rappo County building codes weren't quite the same as neighboring cities such as Denver. So you see a lack of sprinkler system, smoke detection. Fire Prevention Bureau has worked over the years to retroactively retrofit some of these, but a large majority of them still remain unsprinklered. Uh, high density population uh, causes for some interesting fires. This building is very unique. In fact, I've never seen another one like it, not just in South Metro's district, but anywhere. Take a look at this Google Earth view of how the building is constructed. As we dive into the pre-plans, you can see where fire hydrants are located around the building. And as we move into the first floor layout, you can see in red highlight that there are four different entrance doors of the eight that go completely through the building to the courtyard. The only way into the courtyard is through the building itself, which means when a fire is occurring, firefighters actually have to carry their ground ladders through the structure, through those entryways, to get ladders where they need to be placed. And this is a very challenging task. When we head up to the second floor, you can see the layout and there are 104 apartments on the second floor and the third floor. So the occupancy of this building is quite large. Another big challenge is that this is center hallway construction. There are no sprinkler systems and no building alarm system. So other than smoke detectors, there's no notification method for all of those residents to be aware when a fire is occurring. To complicate matters, this building also has a fourth floor, but only in two sections of the building, and it only faces the interior of the courtyard. From the street side, that penthouse level may not even be visible. Engine 21. On oh, scene, mega three-story, multiple dwellings. We got a working fire, second floor, extending to the third floor, engine 21B. Offensive stretch nation three quarter from the exterior. Primary search, and I'll be command, Valencia command on three. 8021 Bravo, command. We're good for water on the two and a half. Water's on its way, but be advised, you have 200 gallons of water. Understood. You got help for water supply with the salvo? Yeah, I've got. Denver is an 18 looking up a water for me. Command 21 Bravo. I would hold off on your interior attack so I can get this water set up. We're going to run out here soon. Call again for command. It's no water supply. It's going to be fast. Stop it. Then I'm going to need your second floor. I'll in on search. 21 Bravo. Command 
22 copies. Coming down the stairwell, then we have the hose line stretched. Alright. Coming down 1300. Command 21, Bravo. Water supply established to engine 21. Yeah, copies. You got a water supply established to engine 21. 22 copies, second floor, primary search. We want you to go up there with an additional inch and three quarter rope in to connect with pre connect. A firm, take up the second inch and three quarter to hook to the Y. Break Aurora, engine 11, command. In this command, I was just confirming your location. I got you floor two, primary search with engine 22. Italian three, command. One minute. On your arrival, prep for division two. Gear up, I'm going to make you division two on your arrival. I copy the two assignment. Come in. Engine 21. Engine 21. We're taking the fire apart on the floor two right now. We got water on the fire. All right. Engine 21. I copy. You got water on the fire and confirmed your location. We've got fire on the third floor. We are on the second floor. That's where the fire started. So we're on the second floor, interior apartment. Copy. In Arapahoe County's second floor, they've got multiple parties on the interior, on the balcony with their deputies. Just uh, FYI, they're safe right now. 42, level 1. Engine 42, I want you to spot your apparatus to the west of the 1300 entrance. I want you to pull an additional horizontal scan pipe, floor 3, primary search, fire attack. And I'll work on a water supply for you. Floor three, the horizontal stand pipe, primary attack, and fire and search. Confirm you want all second alarm medics to level one on scene. That's affirmative. And can you give me, we should have a total of four, correct? Three uh, ladder rescues on the Charlie side. Copy all in ladder rescues, Charlie side. I got is there's six to eight on balconies that need a rescue now. Dispatch command. Command, go ahead. All right, I'm going to give you a resource request. Eight medic units total. I want all medic units staged on Parker Road. As soon as Med 1 gets here, we'll make that medical group. Um, right now, if you can get a pram up here, I see probably three or four patients at the scene. Engine 38, I want you to establish a water supply from engine 21 to engine 42. Go ahead for ladder 32. Uh, Truck 19 from Denver's coming to the Charlie side, which we're calling the interior ring, um, to assist with rescues. Can you give me a size up? Yes, we've got three out on second floor of the Charlie side. We're still working to see if we've got any others. Battalion 4. I'm in place as staging for now. I'll be available on Ops 14. I'm getting an uh, assessment of our resources. Let me know what you need. All units clear the air. Engine 38, go with your urgent. Engine 38 has lost our sparse hose line coming off of the horizontal on floor 3. We need another 150 foot section so that we can complete this stretch so we can get a positive water supply up here. All right, I copy that you've lost your water supply. Ensure you're in a safe location. We'll work on getting you an additional inch and three-quarter to the third floor. Confirming no more victims on balconies, Charlie side. That's me, sir. All right, ladder 32, we've got a fourth story on the interior side. Are you available to go to floor four, pet house, and uh, give a, a can? Knock down. We're uh, searching for extension. And complete primary searches. And if one additional suppress need to bring bottles, we're going to recycle if you have a full suit. I have searches complete. Command copy. Division 2 is requesting bottles. Um, I'll work on that. And uh, you're working. Can you give me a uh, report of how the smoke conditions are on floor 2 and what our ventilation needs are going to be? So we've got low visibility. Free spawn smoke conditions still. We're not ready for ventilation yet until we confirm our extension situation. Uh, when you're ready, I'll give you a staging car. Go ahead. We need eight medics, four engines, and three trucks. In the eight medics, four engines, three trucks. Eight trucks. Engine 20. Engine 7. Command. 
you good on resources right now? Sorry, if you have a connection on. We have uh, just a little light here. Okay, perfect. And that, that's able to tour 41, right? So medical command, I established my little command group where I have a triage officer and a transport officer. I'm literally just uh, monitoring how many patients are coming in, how many resources I need in order to transport those patients uh, out of the scene to the hospitals. And I'm in communication with dispatch right now, the medical supervisor in dispatch, to get a hospital status, bed count, and make sure we're not overwhelming any area hospitals and keep the closest hospital available for critical patients and get all our community patients to the first hospitals out. So I have a total of eight medic units right now and four additional in station. So there's no fire alarms here. So there, this is an unsprinkled building. Um, they do have individual smoke alarms in each unit. That's the very important thing. Um, so there's no fire alarms in the building. Um, so we Club Valencia is located near Parker Road and Mississippi Avenue, right on the border of the city of Denver and very close to the city of Aurora. Both of those fire departments assisted South Metro with the initial attack, search and rescue operations, and overhaul. Three residents were transported to the hospital with minor injuries and almost 20 were evaluated by paramedics on scene. Unfortunately, 85 residential units were displaced by this fire. Community risk reduction specialists and South Metro's emergency manager worked with all of those displaced residents to make lists of things that they needed from the units they could not access. That included pets, pills, important papers, cell phones, laptops, that kind of thing. And with 85 units, that was a huge undertaking. They also assisted those residents in making sure they were squared away with the American Red Cross for lodging. The South Metro Fire Marshal's office continues to investigate the cause of this fire. Just one week after the Club Valencia fire, South Metro responded to another two alarm fire. We have a major fire down to the south side of town. It's going to be right near Centennial Airport, just south of Arapahoe Road. I'll show you on the map where we're talking about. Arapahoe Road is here. Here's Potomac. This is where that fire is right now. Centennial Airport's right over there. Take a look, Air Tracker 7. So what we're looking at, this is Arapahoe Road right here. Uh, and that will be unaffected. You can see the fire, obviously, right here. Potomac is just to the side of it. It looks like Potomac is still open with most of the fire activity around that building right now. So obviously a lot of smoke. It's hitting that layer of uh, the inversion layer. And so it's just capping that smoke right now and then sending it up towards uh, the... Uh, uh, Cherry Creek Reservoir, so you see quite a bit of smoke coming from there, so firefighters obviously have their hands full. Tower 35, Engine 32, Engine 31, Medic 2, Battalion Chief 5, Safety 35, Channel SMF Ops 3, Reported Commercial Structure Fire, at Comcast 7059, South Potomac. This is May 2302. I'm seeing a heavy header of smoke in that direction from Parker Air Force 70. Safety 10. You can upgrade that. Safety 10 or upgrade in 606. Battalion 5 dispatch. Per safety 10's request, we upgraded it to a confirmed structure fire. Believe it's the address of Comcast 2 three story building with heavy flames coming from the roof. Medic 23, who was in the area of 470 and Parker, even reported flames. Your winds are going to be. Your winds are currently northeast at 3. Dispatch, safety 35. Safety 35. Safety 35 is on scene, medium generator room. That active fire, that's a working fire in generator. Safety 35 will be Comcast Command. We have a gate issue as we're coming open. ACS is trying to hold it open for us as we come in. Safety 35, I'll show you on scene of a medium sized generator room with a working fire establishing Comcast Command. At 611. Tower 32, Tower 18, Engine 33, Engine 41, Engine 23, Engine 14, Medic 44, Medic 32, Battalion Chief 4, Aurora Battalion Chief 2, Safety 18, Channel SMF Ops 14, Second Alarm Structure Fire. Engine 31, looks like there's a hydrant right by the gate that you're going to come through. You can get a water supply to Tower 35. Water slide, tower 35, copy. Committee 42, you need assist. Engine 42 and tower 35 with fire type. 
Command Tower 35 Alpha. If Tower 35 spotted on the Alpha side, uh, looks like we can do a fire attack with a two and a half from the Bravo side. Command copies. You're going to be parked on the Alpha side. You got access from the Bravo side. You can do two fire attack with two and a half. You can go for that. I got a watch like coming to you. With Time 5, we can't make it in through here. Engine 42, let's work on getting both of those gates open, even if we have to force it. Come in, Engine 44. We're level one uh, secondary water supply across the street on Potomac. Command copy. We have limited access here, so um, we've got Tower 35 setting up on the east side. We need to determine if we've got access to this from the west side. Why don't you start working on that? Copy. We're going to reposition off of Euclid or on Tucson way and we'll advise Command Tower 45, level 1 on Potomac. Tower 45. We can't fit your rig in, but we got a lot of needs for forcible entry. So why don't you come up to the command post with some circular sauce? Command Tower 3 on level 1. Turning three gear up, come to my location, please. Command copies, rescue 34. Why don't you work with engine 22 on forcible entry? We've got gates both there and then adjacent to the generator that's on fire that's going to need force. I'll be working on forcible entry with 22. Well, units on scene, I'm not necessarily labeling this building yet because the generator itself is not attached to the primary building. It's in the back parking lot. But we'll call um, Potomac the alpha side of the call for now. May I have 5035? Go ahead, 5035. 360 complete, no basement. It's just the area of the generator. We have gates. Our fence around the Delta side, without access there, without having force. Got power security inside. I can shut up that down. There's also a door that's now forced on the Alpha side. We this water supply. We can start fire attack. All right, so let's clean that up. Just confirming that that we may have access from the south or the west. We have a man door access on the east side, Alpha side. Have access to the building itself for a secondary water supply in another area. I believe on the west side there's a parking lot. Get eyes on that again. Command in at 44. Chief, we repositioned the 7050 Tucson Way. We do have a secondary water supply and good access to the building that is on fire. I can take another aerial to the west side for aerial ops if needed. We can cut some gates for good access. Perfect. Let's start working on that. I'm going to send a battalion chief your way, establish Charlie Division, and that'll be your assignment, is to establish access and a second means of fire attack from the Charlie. Copy, engine 44, to be Charlie. Access and water supply. Copy, safety 11. I'm setting battalion 3 up as Charlie Division on the west side of the building, you could probably relocate yourself to engine 44's location and you could be his safety. Copy that. I've got engine 22 and rescue 34 ready for reassignment. Why don't you come to the command post, stand by on deck. The South Metro Fire Marshal's office determined that an equipment malfunction is what caused this fire. Oh my gosh! This is fun. Back with the old pal. Yes. It's been so long. <laughs> I know. It's nice to see all of you guys. Happy holidays. Hope you all are doing well. Eric invited me to be involved in the patch shoutouts today and I said, heck yeah. Let's have a little catch up right now, shall we? Can I have some mustard? Oh, yes. Hot dog or hamburger? Neither. <laughs> Braylon is now one and he's walking on his own. And it's so much fun to see him walking and 
I mean, I don't remember back to when first walking. My mind doesn't go back that far, but it's, yeah. he's so excited and he loves all of the lights this year for the holidays and Ember's three. Josiah and I are still working here at South Metro, obviously, and, and we're just having a lot of fun as a family, so. Yeah. I'm glad you gave that update because people right? ask about you like I all know. the time. I know! So yeah. we had to take advantage of me popping in here. So Absolutely. thanks for having me, Eric. Thanks for coming over. What <laughs> patches do you have? Okay, so the first one I have is a decal from Next Level Extrication. We also have a patch from Next Level Extrication. This is a pretty cool shape for this one. All right, these next ones we have all involve Colorado places. So the first one is uh, Gilpin County Sheriff's Office. There we go. The next one we have is North Glen Ambulance, South Adams County Paramedics. This one is Clear Creek EMS. I love the mountains and then the river flowing through there with the EMS symbol. All right, and the last one I have is actually from our South Metro Geographic Information Systems team, also known as GIS. We had a GIS day recently, and they talked about all the projects that they're working on, all of the mapping they do for our department, and their patch is really freaking cool. So here's that one. All right, Eric, your turn. Nice. All right, starting off with a challenge coin. This one was handed to us in person by Jordan, the PIO with Anchorage Middletown Fire and EMS from Kentucky, Louisville, not like how we pronounce it here, which is Louisville. All right, I'm probably gonna pronounce this one wrong, but somebody- I'm glad you're doing it today. I know. You, yeah. I figured since Housing you're the, the special torch. guest, I would do the hard <laughs> ones. Naugatuck, Connecticut Fire Department. The next ones I have are from Orwigsburg Borough, Pennsylvania. This is the police department patch. All right, the next one is Orwigsburg, Pennsylvania's um, police department, probably the shoulder patch where the other one might be like the front of a, a uniform on a coat or something like that. But that one's pretty cool, maybe the courthouse or police station. And then this, this one cool. is from the fire department, Station 56. Connor's already claimed this yes. one for her wall. Yes. I don't get to keep this one. All right, the next one I have is County of Burke Emergency Services, EMS. And then we have Bladen County Emergency Services, EMS Medical. We have so many to add to our collection. Do, Thank you guys great. so much for continuing to uh, be involved in our collection. Years back, I don't think, as we've said many times, uh, we never thought we would get this much interaction from people. So it is truly amazing to see these patches come in from around the globe and we, we couldn't do this without you guys. So thanks for making this special. Yeah, thank you so much for sending these in um, for all of the comments, the letters that we get. Um, we've had a lot of questions on when the next day in the life video will be released and I'm excited to announce that we have a completely new video series something that you all haven't seen or heard about yet before. Um, and it's very similar to how a day in the life feels, but we're taking the call aspect and this is gonna show you more of our emergency responses and dive into EMS. So next week we will have a trailer release for that and January 1st is gonna be the very first episode of You'll have to wait till next week. Oh, keep them the on the edge name. of edge of their seats. Yes. Stay on the edge of your seats. <laughs> Eric's been working really hard on it, so you guys are gonna love it. Yep, I'm excited to show everybody and uh, just fine tuning some of those episodes right now. But the trailer's pretty rad, and you'll get to see that next week. So, thanks for watching. Be safe, and we'll catch you next time. Take care, guys. Happy holidays. Yay! I'm Eric. And I'm Connor. And, and this, this is, is a PIO, PIO vlog. <laughs> I love it. It's so stupid, but I love it too. Oh, okay.